everybody, this is Sherry at dgsundry.blogspot.com and today I have a fun project for you. I am participating in a swap over at artandsassy.ning.com and actually mine are already in the mail but I wanted to make one more so I could do a tutorial and then at the end of the video you'll see the ones that I made and I'll give you a brief run through. I made them all a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the rules for this particular swap is that the tags needed to be four and a half inches by about two and three eighths inches um, or a number five tag. Now I don't have the Ranger number five tags. I have these number five shipping tags just because they're fairly cheap to buy when you buy them in an office supply store. And it came in this big box of a hundred and I don't know, it was probably eight or nine dollars. I don't remember. I've had them for a long time because they last a long time. And mine are actually a little bit bigger. They're four and three quarters, but they're still going to work for the swap and I didn't cut them down. Um, I'm also going to be using some other things. I've got some Dusty Concord Distress Ink, which we may or may not use. And I've got my Distress Tool here ready for it. I'm just not sure if the color match is going to be right and if it's not we'll get a different color out. I've got this lace that was left over from or that I recently showed in an estate haul. Um, I've got some gelatos. The ones I have here are this um, the, well the first one is this purple one and then the other one is this gold color one which I've not used before. Um, I this is actually my second attempt at this particular tag because the last time when I did it, um, I used the yellow with the um, purple. And I'm changing colors because it'll match my ribbon better, but also be real careful about mixing these two together because they don't blend well and it came out this ugly brown nasty color. So I'm not, I'm going to be much more careful. I may not even use both of them yet. I have this little charm that I had, I just found in my charm stash, and I put a little, I, I'm not a jewelry maker, I'm going to call it an O-ring, I don't know if that's really what it, it's called, but I've got this little ring already attached to it. I'm going to be using some papers, and I'm not sure yet which one of these will be the better match, we'll just have to see. The thing about using these gelatos is I just kind of play with them until I find the right color, so we'll see what color we end up, which paper we end up using. Um, I'm going to definitely be using score tape. Um, I have some different bling that I pulled out here from different, this is Recollections and that's Recollections. This is Prima, more Recollections and more Want to Scrap. I'm not using all, all of that obviously, I'll just use whichever is the best um, match when we get that far. And then I am using two different stamp sets. I'm using, um, this is an old set from um, my, um, my, my, my Mind's Eye Lost and Found. I believe this is the Princess Blush collection. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not sure what happened to my packaging for it. But I'm using this dress form from this collection. And then I'm also using from K. Andrew Designs. I'm using So Much Fun. And I actually used two sets of stamps, or two stamps from this set. It's um, this one that says Never Pattern Your Life After Anyone Else. And then I used this one that looks like zigzag stitching. And I've actually already done my stamping. So this is my tag and you can see it's a mess on the back because I just tore off the canvas that didn't work. And I've are, I, on the front, I'm using sticky back canvas as you can see here and I've already got it adhered. Now the reason I chose sticky back canvas is I like to use gelatos on canvas so I thought the sticky back canvas would be fun. I have to say it's a little bit different to work with than the, sticky, uh, than the regular canvases that I've used in the past. Um, I had a little bit more difficulty blending it, which is why I have this wet wipe. Now you may, may or may not be able to see on camera because I can barely see it without being on camera, but I actually have already stamped um, on this tag. I used Versamark and white embossing powder and my dress form is right here. And then on three of the sides and across the top, I've done the zigzag stitch in the um, Versamark with the white embossing powder. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my, my purple. Now I found after all the different ones for the swap that I made that the, that the darker colors work better for this technique um, because it shows up better. Um, I actually discovered this technique quite by accident I thought it would work to do this by stamping my image and embossing it and then rubbing the gelato over the top with my finger. 
but with the sticky back canvas it just didn't work but when I was trying to wash it off this is my practice piece when I was trying to wash it off with a wipe to start over to see what would work then that's when it came through the white works really well for this um, as well I like the look of the clear actually better but it doesn't always come through as well so what I'm going to do here is I am just going to start mixing this gelato this purple color in and as I blend it in um, you'll see that at least some of the embossing will start to show through now I have to tell you it is a bit tricky I think it's because it's so difficult to see if the embossing is done um, I, I can't tell you for sure if it becomes a problem when the embossing is under embossed or if it's over embossed. I, I had thought it was because it was over embossed or under embossed, but the more I played with it, the more I wondered if it was more because it was under embossed. So I don't know, but you can see on this side, it's just not coming through. It's not going to hurt the integrity of my tag, I don't think, but it's still gonna look really nice. So you see, as I am moving those gelatos around with my wet wipe, um, these gelatos are water soluble so as I move them around it changes it takes on dimension of its own because it's you know I've put less down in some places and there may be a little bit more water on some places than the others now this first side that I embossed turned out really well it's just this side over here that doesn't seem like it did but that's okay I'm so pleased with the effect so now we see, now you see that my tag is curling. That's not a problem because as we dry it, it'll be okay. Now, um, this is that first step. Now, I think I'm going to try to add a little bit of the yellow, of the gold color in. Not a lot because I've got to, I, I don't want to ruin my project if it doesn't work. So I'm just going to start at the bottom because that's going to be covered up anyway. And let's just try to blend some of that in. So it's blending in okay, and what it's doing is it's taking on, it's giving it a shimmer effect, I guess, a little bit. So what I could do now, I, I'm not going to put any more of the gold in because I'm just not pleased with the way it went on. Now when you're using the gelatos on regular canvas, if it doesn't work, you can just rub it off and start over. Or it will change, you know, you can't get it all off, but you can rub it rub some of it off and you can start over actually you can get a pretty good job of getting most if not all of it off however on these the sticky back canvas I found that it you can't do that so I don't want to mess with that on the bottom and mess that up anymore but I um, think I let's see I think I'm going to try to pull some of it off in this area because that's the area that I plan to stamp my sentiment on and we'll see if we can just kind of lighten it up there. So there we have the first part of our tag. Kind of takes on a shabby, chic type of fill to it. And then you have the dress form popping through. Now for part of this tag swap, um, you were supposed to use a sturdy material. Both sides had to be finished. The back side doesn't have to be decorated, but it does have to be finished. And then you were supposed to use four different elements. Well, here I've already used really two or actually three if you count the gelatos. I've got the gelatos, I've got my stamp which is embossed so we could count that as one or two the embossing we will say one and then we've got the canvas and then we've got the gelato so that's the first steps now since this is wet what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video I'm going to pull out my embossing um, tool and dry it so that we can continue working so I'll be back in just a minute Okay, so I have it basically dry. It's not, it's probably got just a little bit of moisture in it, but it's still fine. And you notice it still hasn't quite completely flattened out, but it's pretty pliable. So all I have to do is kind of play with it and it flattens out more and more. And by the time I get my backing on it, it will really be flat. So the next thing I'm going to do is stamp my sentiment. Kind of played with this to make sure that it would show on a piece of scrap. And I'm pretty, I didn't have the exact same color pattern but I'm pretty sure it's still going to show so I'm just inking up my stamp with the dusty conquered distress ink now 
I thought about spraying this with some glitter spray just to add an extra dimension and you could do that and it would look really nice. Um, if you do that though, and if you're using distress inks like I am on this one, you're going to have to be really careful because the distress ink will react with water too and you don't want it to run if it's um, not dry. So if you're going to spray it, I would really suggest that what you would do would be spray it first and let it dry and then stamp your sentiment on it. So there we have my sentiment, never pattern your life after anyone else. And I almost got it in that zigzagging on the side. And I'm glad I didn't because it would have rubbed right off that embossing because it creates a resist. But so there we have that. And so now we're ready to continue on. This is where the score tape comes in. And what I'm doing here is I have, this is just quarter inch score tape and I'm just running it across the bottom. Now, this is another thing that you want to be sure that it's pretty dry on because if it's not, your adhesive may not stick. So just make sure that's good and adhered down. Then we'll peel that backing up. And this takes just a minute, but I, rather than doing it straight across, I wanted to, to pleat it. And this one's not quite, quite cut straight, so I'll go back and trim that. So what I do is I just finger pleat it going across, just to add a little bit more dimension. I don't do a lot of pleating, and I'm definitely, it's not an organized pattern of pleating. It's just a little bit of paper pleating that I'm doing, or lace pleating that I'm doing across the bottom. So every once in a while there's this little pucker in the lace and the score tape really grabs that pucker really, really well. So I have the dimension that I want, but it stays down really well. Just about done with that. Some days I feel like I'm all thumbs when I'm doing stuff like that. And notice I left it attached to the long piece because I didn't want waste any more than necessary. Now on this side, there's going, there's a little bit of waste here. So now the next step that I'm going to do, this is not how I did it on the others and I wish I had. Um, the next th step that I'm going to do is the back. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a paper that I think matches and I've got a couple options here. I've got this one, which is very pretty. Um, and then this Graphic 45 pack, there are some pretty purples as well. Um, I don't want the garden. That's not the quite, that's not in the right. I think I'm going to go with this one here from the SEI. So we're going to pull that up. And I am an eyeballer. You know that if you've watched many of my videos and if you haven't, well, I'm telling you, I'm an eyeballer. So I'm going to now adhere my paper down. Um, I, on some of my other ones, I did the, put the beads on first, and one of them I had beads too close to the hole, so when I went to cut the hole, it didn't quite fit, so that's why I'm doing it first this time. So I'm gonna line it up as closely as I can on two, two of the edges, just so that I have less cutting to do. Adhere that down really super well. And I like these, I don't even know if you can get these scissors anymore. These are queen bees is what they were called from EK Success. I know you can still get the cutter bees, but these are the queen bees. And they have, until getting my Tim Holtz tonic scissors, they were definitely my favorite scissors. Now it's kind of a toss up, depends on what I'm doing, but I like the fact that, first of all, they're not serrated, which the Tim Holtz you have to make sure you have them going on the right edges or you get a bit of a serration on it. And then, so I like that, but I like the fact that it has a really nice long blade. So I just cut cleaner if I don't have as many cuts to make. And then this is just my, um, we are memorcume or whatever this thing's called. I forgot, crocodile. And so cut my hole in there. And so now we're going to decide what bling we want on this. So I've pulled my bling out and I can really, ooh, that's definitely not the purple I want. And I know that those colors don't really go, but I th that purple's not a bad purple for, uh, for the bead part, not for the lace part. 
Maybe this is the one I want. So let's just open this Recollections one up. Not a huge fan of the crocheted flower. It's just I'm not a yarn flower person. I'm more of a lace and a, and a daintier flower person. Um, I'll, I'll probably find something to do with it, but I actually bought it because I believe it was on sale or on clearance or something, and I believe I bought it because I like the bling on it so much. Um, you know, initially I liked this darker purple, but I think I'm going to go ahead and go with this one, and this is where I start kind of dissecting and choosing which parts of it that I want. This piece here, and I like to kind of tuck it under. I want it all to fit, but I want it to be kind of tucked under the lace so it looks like it's coming out of the lace. Just like that. And let's see, in the upper corner, I, I want one to balance, but I want a smaller one because that's where all my ribbon and stuff is going. So I think I'll just take this little one right here. I am really a cutter when it comes to bling because I'm also a bit of a quarter when it comes to bling. And so I tend to cut it pretty. Lots of little pieces as you can see if you see my old bling packets. So there we've added just that much. And then what I want to do, before I put my ribbon on, I want to go ahead and distress the edges. And the reason I do this is because if you look from the side, you can see some white or craft, depending on which part is showing. And so I want to minimize that as much as I can. Plus, it gives me the opportunity to pull in that same color that I have there with my distress ink stamping. So that's why I choose to do that. And it just adds another layer of dimension to the project to have the different colors playing with the different layers of purple, I should say, not colors. And then I just want the back, just because I think it looks a little bit more finished to have the back all done. So I'm almost done with that. We'll set that aside. So this is then where I have to decide on the colors. Now my original plan was to use the gold crown and the purple passion, but now the gold crown really won't go because there's no yellow in the card at all. So I think instead is I'm going to use the purple passion. Um, and let's see, I have a bag of scraps here. And let me see if I've got some, an nope, I don't have antique white in that. So we're gonna pull the antique white from here and I'm going to cut a couple of pieces. Um, let's see, about that long. And I want probably two pieces of the white and one piece of the purple. Just like that. And I'm going to take see which ones are the closest in size. Probably, I guess they're pretty much all the same. Um, we're going to take those two and we're going to thread that through our hole just like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little charm and thread that through the hole, which is a bit tricky to get started. And if uh, on some of my others, my O-ring wasn't completely closed, and so it would catch. So that was a bit tricky too. Okay, so rather than tie that then, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my next piece of antique white. So we've got several different shades of purple going on here. Um, which is okay as long as they coordinate. And as I look at this Purple Passion, I'm not 100% sure that I like it as much as I would like the Witch's Brew. So that's the beauty of creating it yourself. You can make it the way you would like. And the, as much as I love that Purple Passion, that is my favorite ribbon, this one comes in a close second, but the Purple Passion is my favorite of the three girl jam colors. 
but it just, I'm not liking the way it coordinates with these particular purples. And the, this one almost, the Witch's Brew almost gets lost, which is really not what I was going for either, but it still is a better coordinating color. So now I get to thread those through. Now I will go back through when I'm, when we're all done and trim up my tails because I don't mind them to look a little bit rough, but after threading it through the holes and then threading it through, they tend to get really rough. So I like to clean them up just a little bit. I'm gonna have to get something and poke that through. There we go. Of course I could have just reached next to me and got it, but that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna make sure that that's all laying the correct direction. There we go, that looks much nicer. Now we'll get our antique white strip. And rather than tie a bow, I am just going to tie a knot. Because with the if I tie a bow with my charm hanging down, you'll lose the charm the way I have this one. And I want it to be nice and secure. So I am going to just tie it in a knot. If I'm off the camera, I apologize. Just kind of slide that down. And so there we have it. So then I'll go back and just kind of trim up my tails at an angle. And the reason I do that is, well, for one, I like the way it looks better. But the other reason I do it is because I don't, it will ravel tails that are cut straight on ribbon. Here's a little quick tip for you if you didn't know this, probably most of you do. But tails that are straight ravel more easily than tails that are cut at an angle. So there is this tag. And in just a minute, I will show you the other tags that I did for this series. And um, we'll then finish up the video. So now I want to show you the other tags that I have already made. And um, these, uh, I'll quickly go through what I used on each of them, but I just want to show them to you quickly. We're going to start with this pink one. And there you see my charm. I have some um, bling here. And this bling, I have to look at my list because I used several different ones. Um, this one is from Want to Scrap, and we've got pink in the corner, and it's got kind of this off-white. Now this one, the embossing, didn't show through because, as I previously mentioned, the lighter colors don't show through as well. So what I did is I used, um, I went over the top of it again, then, and re-stamped it with um, some dust, uh, what, Victorian velvet distress ink, and then I have stamped, or yes, yeah, stamped around the corner with my zigzag, and here's my stamp that has my saying on it. Then on the back, I just put some paper from Echo Park, and that one was all done. This is um, Baby Girl and Antique White, so that's the first one. The next one that I did, and this I have to say is probably one of my favorite ones. This one is an orange and um, yellow, um, and I used orange and yellow gelatos. And again, I this one, the it didn't come through. The yellow just doesn't come through with the embossing like some of the other colors. So I went over the top of it with vintage photo distress ink, and that's what I stamped my stitching and my... Um, saying in and then this scrap is from or I mean this little flower is like a peachy color flower but it pulls out the colors um, and they kind of play off each other and that is also from Prima and then on the back I use this paper from the secret garden and the pad that I used is this kind of it's a six by six pad that is the um, solids and patterns that they sell to go with their tags. And then I used um, Sunflower and Harvest Orange Distress Ink. So that's the second one. And I don't know, I it's hard for me to choose what my favorite. I really like this one. I like the softness of this one. I like the just the summery feel of this one. And this one, I just like the colors and I think it's fun. Now this one was actually embossed in white instead of in um, the clear and the ink, I just put the stitching on one side of this one and I used just memento ink on this. And I used iris and um, white um, three girl jam ribbon 
The white that I used is actually from the old red, white, and blue pack. It's not the um, the current one, which is a lot of fun. Um, I, I have noticed that it actually um, is the same white that you could find in the dress um, blue or in the navy, you know, the white and the dress um, white and the navy blue pack from Three Girl Jam. And then this paper on the back is from SEI, from the Couture Stack. And then I distressed around the edges of this one with Dusty Concord ink. And this is three different colors. This is the purple and then the darker blue is in the middle and the lighter blue is on the outside edge. And this one is a lot of fun too, and I love the summeriness of this one. This one I actually, um, I was going to initially show you all of the steps, including the embossing, but when I picked up this tag, I didn't realize until I started inking that this is the one that I hadn't embossed yet, so this one was never even embossed. So I, after I inked it with the green and the yellow gelatos and got it all blended to the colors I want, I went back in with um, pilled paint distress ink and I stamped my um, stitching and my sentiment and my dress form. And here's a little hint. Um, the N and the P and the E did not really stamp cleanly, but thankfully I had the pill paint distress marker and I was just able to lightly go over that um, so that it was still, I was able to save the tag. And then the back of this is also from the Couture um, pack and it's actually, the edging is distressed in vintage photo instead of the pilled paint because I forgot which one I had done it with. So there are those four tags and of course you'll see the completed tag as well at the end of the video. So thanks so much for stopping by today and remember take some time to enjoy the little things. Have a great day. Bye.